Hello everyone, welcome back to episode 2 of the Catalyst 9800 101 series. My name is Justin Liu, a technical marketing engineer in the Enterprise Network Wireless BU. Last time we worked to get our dCloud lab environment set up. And today in this episode, we will be covering how to create a WLAN using the basic WLAN design workflow. During the basic WLAN design workflow, we'll define a location for our site, create and apply the WLAN for this location, and then provision an AP to the location. Once that's done, we'll define a DHCP server for our WLAN so that clients can get an IP address when they connect. And finally, we'll test the connectivity of our newly created WLAN. Before we get started, let's take a look at the 9800's configuration model. Previously, with AirOS, when configuring all the characteristics for the SSID, the settings were not modular. If you wanted to apply the same policy or profile to another group of APs, you would need to create another one just for that group. In the C9800 configuration model, these settings have been logically decoupled and modularized into three tags, policy, site, and RF. And these tags can be reused and applied to different AP groups for your sites. Now let's break down the three different tags. The policy tag defines the broadcast domain, or the list of WLANs that will be broadcast at the site along with the policies of the respective SSIDs. This is equivalent to the AP group in AirOS. The site tag defines the properties of the central and remote sites, as well as defining the roaming domain for the flex APs. The flex APs are equivalent to the flex groups in AirOS. For local mode APs, there isn't a limit for how many APs that you can associate to a site tag, but for flex mode APs, there's a limit of 100 APs per site tag. And finally, the RF tag defines the RF properties for the group of APs. When going through the basic WLAN design workflow, the tags will be created for the user and associated to the APs automatically based off the settings we put during the workflow. Okay, now let's jump into the web UI of our WLC and get started. Now that we're in the web UI of the 9800 WLC, let's access the basic WLAN design workflow. To do this, let's go to the wireless icon at the top and select Basic. This will take us to the basic WLAN design workflow. And first, we'll have to create a location, so let's click Add. This will bring us to the general tab of location. So for location name, I'm going to name it Pod1 Location, but you can name this whatever you want. For the location type, I'm going to leave as local, and client density will leave as typical. Now to save the settings, click Apply. With the location created, we can now enter the settings for this location by clicking on the name. And here, let's create a new WLAN. So let's go to Wireless Networks. And then to create a new WLAN, we'll click Add. This will bring up the Location Setup Wizard. So click Define New to create up a new WLAN. And for the profile name, I'm going to name it Pod1 Admin, but you can name this whatever you want. And then when you leave that field, the SSID field will automatically populate, but you can also rename this to whatever you need it to be. I'm going to leave it as is. For the WLAN ID, I'm going to leave as default, so in this case it's 1. Next, let's enable the WLAN by toggling the status to enabled, and I'll leave the rest of the settings as default. Now let's go to security, and here we'll leave the layer 2 security mode as WPA plus WPA2, but now we'll just change the auth key management in the WPA parameters to PSK rather than 802.1x. Here we can do the pre-shared key. So in the dCloud guide, I'm gonna be using Cisco Cisco, but you can change the PSK to whatever you need to fit your deployment. And now, once we're done, we can click apply to device in order to save the, the WLAN configuration. With the WLAN created, we'll now need to assign it to a VLAN or a VLAN group. So to do this, we'll go to the policy details and the VLAN VLAN group. For this WLAN, I'm going to be choosing the Management VLAN. And I'm going to be leaving the rest of the settings as default. But for your deployment, you could also create a new IPv4, IPv6 ACL, and then choose that here. And here you can choose the QoS policy for your WLAN. When you're done, click Add. Now on the page, it'll update with the WLAN you created, as well as the VLAN that it's mapped to. If other WLANs are needed for this location, just click Add and follow the steps as before, and then continue for all the other WLANs needed. When you're done, click Apply to provision the changes to the location. Now let's go back to the Pod1 location settings. 
and let's go to the wireless networks and we can see that pod one admin has been saved and it's mapped to the management VLAN. And next, we'll now provision an AP to the location. To do this, go to the AP provisioning tab. And since our AP already joined the WLC, it'll appear here. So find the AP and check the box next to the AP Mac and click the blue arrow to add it to the location. And now we'll click apply. So now that we've applied the AP to the location, it'll now rejoin the WLC. And next time it rejoins, it'll then be tagged with the necessary pod one location tags in order to broadcast the correct WLAN that we created. This may take a few minutes, so we'll come back once the AP has rejoined. So now that the AP has rejoined the WLC, and you can tell that it has because in the access point list, now it's updated again to one. So if we click there, we can see that our AP has indeed joined and it has been successfully tagged with the policy, site, and RF tags for pod one location. And if we check the wireless networks being broadcasted, we can see that the SSID that we created is now being broadcasted. So now that we have verified that the SSID is being broadcasted, let's now make sure that when devices join this WLAN, they get an IP address via DHCP. So to do this, we'll go to Configuration, Tags and Profiles, Policy. Now select the policy profile that was created for our location. In the Edit Policy Profile window, we'll go to Advanced, go to DHCP, and check IPv4 DHCP required. And here, put in the DHCP server IP address. So for the dCloud lab, that's going to be the IP address of our Active Directory server. So we'll go back to dCloud and choose Active Directory. And we see that the IP address is 198.18.133.1. So copy the IP address and go back to the WLC, and we'll paste that into the DHCP server IP address. If you aren't using the dCloud lab, just paste the IP address of your DHCP server. And now, to save their settings, we'll go to Update and Apply to Device. Now that we've created a fully functional WLAN, let's verify the connectivity when a client joins the WLAN. Now we're in my iPhone, and we'll use this to test the connectivity of our WLAN. So we'll click on Wi-Fi in the Settings app. Now in the list of available networks, we'll wait for the SSID of our WLAN to appear. And now it has Pod1 Admin, so we'll click on it to connect to it. And I'll log in using the PSK we configured, Cisco Cisco, and click Join. And now we'll wait for it to fully authenticate with the WLAN. And now that it has, we'll click the I and see if we got an IP address from the DHCP server and it has, it's 198.19.11.11. Now let's check on the WLC web UI. So we'll just refresh the page if the client list hasn't updated and see now in active there's one. So we'll click on there. And now we'll check if the IP address matches that of the iPhone and it does, showing that our iPhone is successfully connected to the WLAN we created using the basic design workflow. And with that, we've reached the end of episode one of the 9800-101 series. In summary, we use the basic WLAN design workflow to create a location for our site, create and apply a WLAN to that location, provision an AP to that location, define a DHCP server for our clients, and finally how to verify the connectivity of our WLAN. Please join us next time where we will be going over how to use the advanced WLAN design workflow. If you like this video, please give us a thumbs up and subscribe to our YouTube channel. Thank you. I'll see you next time.